All right, folks, welcome to the Department of Physics and Astronomy. Can you all hear me? Okay, cool. Um, you can unmute your mic if you have a question. Anytime you're welcome to ask a question. So if you have any questions anytime, please feel free to um, talk to me, okay? All right, so uh, I'll actually give you a brief overview on our department. Okay, I'll, screen, uh, I'll share my screen and then I will be available to answer your questions. All right. In the meantime, you can email me your name and your intended major so that I can uh, email you back all the required information. Okay. All right, can you see my screen? Okay. So, um, Department of Physics and Astronomy. Uh, I am Narayanan Kutrummal. I am the chair of the Department of Physics and Astronomy. Uh, and I go by NK, so you are welcome to call me NK. Okay, I think that's much easier. Um, so, uh, Few things about our department. Uh, this is one of the uh, best undergraduate departments in the nation. Okay, uh, award-winning, diverse, and friendly uh, faculty. Small classes. Small classes mean we have 48 students in the intro classes. That means lecture classes, and that will be split into two. That means 24 students in the lab. Okay. So 24 students in the lab, and we combine two such labs uh, in the lecture. When it comes to upper division classes, you will see maybe between 10 and 15, okay? So uh, small uh, classrooms, and we have excellent research opportunities, and I'll go through it if we get time. Research is required. All of our majors do at least a semester of research, okay? And some of them publish their papers, manuscripts or research findings in international journals, okay? So you can also consider that. And uh, we prepare students academically and also for um, graduate schools. We have part-time job opportunity, opportunities available in the department. Um, you can be a TA, okay, for example. And we have several scholarships. Uh, I'm sure you might have already applied for some of those um, scholarship opportunities. And we have several outreach activities. Uh, we have the SPS, Society of Physics Students, Student Club. So it's actually um, one of the uh, best fun departments to do your BS, okay? Cool. So quickly, let me go through uh, some of our degree programs. We have BA, BS in Physics, BS in Astrophysics, and BA in Astronomy, BA in Meteorology, and also if you're interested in teaching, you can actually look into secondary physics education. Okay. And within the major, we have several concentrations. If you like, for example, uh, energy aspect, you can actually take a concentration in energy production, or computational neuroscience, or operational meteorology, or atmospheric physics. Operational meteorology basically prepares you for National Weather Service jobs. You can take both uh, operational meteorology and atmospheric physics concentrations, okay? That prepares you for National Weather Service jobs plus graduate studies in atmospheric physics or meteorology, okay? Uh, we also have minors in physics, astronomy, biomedical physics, and neuroscience. Uh, I'm not sure whether you are actually uh, know the difference between BA and BS. Do you know the difference, anybody? 
Yeah, I have, I think, a senior student sitting there. Um, so uh, a BA essentially means it's a less rigorous degree. So you'll be taking less number of courses, okay? A BS is a more rigorous degree. You'll be taking more physics, astrophysics, or mathematics, and all, okay? So if you're actually uh, looking into graduate school, of course, BS, okay? And when it comes to astrophysics and astronomy, we basically call BS as astrophysics, BA as astronomy, okay? That's the difference. Uh, we also have a BS in systems engineering. I think some of you are interested in systems engineering. It's a new uh, degree program that we just started, uh, officially offered this fall, okay? Very interesting degree program. Uh, it's an interdisciplinary degree program, uh, the first in the state of South Carolina. Okay? Uh, it integrates, you know, all disciplines uh, and specialty groups into a team effort, forming a structured development process that proceeds from concept to production to operation. Okay, that's what. So if you think about your cell phone. It's a unit, right? And it has electricity in it. It has, you know, the display unit uh, and mechanical parts. So it's actually a combination of several such units and forming a system. Okay, and that's our uh, new engineering field. And you can see it. Uh, it requires. It's a bit intense in terms of credits. You can do it. Uh, it has 132 credits total, 92 in the major. Okay. Um, so you have all the basic sciences and math. You have computer programming, you have systems engineering, uh, and also um, uh, uh, you need uh, the uh, business supply chain management, okay, 12 hours. So it's engineering plus management, okay? I will answer your questions at the end. And uh, we will be starting electrical engineering, not this semester, but next semester, okay? Um, so that we are actually working on it. We just received the permission to offer BS in electrical engineering uh, program. Okay, um, same 132 credits. Okay, um, I'm not going um, into the details of that, but it again requires basic sciences, liberal arts, um, electrical engineering requirement, computer programming, and of course some engineering electives. Okay, uh, if you Think about the department, it's departmental productivity I'm talking about, okay? So the number of degree awarded, 30, that of course it's a, not a huge number, but it's physics and astronomy. If you, you know, nationally you don't see several physics and astronomy majors, okay? The requirement, you know, you need all the mathematics and physics. And you can see the number of published research articles, 32, okay, that's approximate. That means those are the number of papers published by the faculty and also students group, okay, in the, in the department, okay, and published abstracts. Students also go for conferences and, and present their work, um, uh, and that's possible. And undergraduate research students, you can see our faculty mentored about 62 students, and most of the students are actually, you know, um, they do their research during summer. Okay, and summer, and it's mostly paid. It's paid from the department, paid by the dean's office, School of Sciences and Mathematics, and also uh, you'll get funding from the uh, um, from the college. Okay, uh, and you can also see the uh, the grant amounts received. Um, and this is you can see, you know, the uh, American Institute of Physics Statistics. You can see the College of Charleston right there. Uh, this is the number of uh, graduates produced in physics, okay? And there are 492 departments in the nation offering only BS in physics, okay? And among those departments, if you look at it, we are number uh, 16 around in the nation, okay? And that tells you something about our program, okay? So it's one of the best undergraduate departments or undergraduate program in the nation, okay? So uh, the major high highlight is the quality, highlights are the quality of our program and also the undergraduate research, all right? 
and we just started our engineering program and the faculty we hired is in the process of um, setting up her lab, uh, her facilities, her office. And when you come back in the fall, you will see um, her in, in full action, okay? Any questions so far, anybody? Okay, um, um, please don't forget to email me your um, name and your uh, intended major, okay, please. Uh, my email address, um, I just um, send you the email address. And you know, physics require a lot of math, okay, as a core requisite or a prerequisite, okay. Um, what you can see here is the math requirement, okay. Uh, it's actually based on this year, based on your SAT score or ACT score, you can see if you want to take math 120. So whether it is physics, astrophysics, or engineering, you need calculus-based physics, okay? Physics 111 lecture and lab, and physics 112 lecture and lab, okay? So physics 111 lecture and lab, you need math 120, which is calculus one as a co-requisite, okay? It can be also a prerequisite. So um, that is the requirement. So you can take Math 120 and, and Physics 111 Lecture and Lab in the fall, okay? If you don't have any transfer credits, if you have already taken, um, or if you already have transfer credits, taken AP, uh, AP or Owner's Calculus, you can see here, um, that's okay. But if you don't have any, of course, I mean, then you should be able to take Math 120, which is Calculus 1 and Physics 111 Lecture and Lab, okay? Once you complete that, in the spring, you'll be taking Math 220, which is Calculus 2, and then Physics 112 Lecture and Lab, okay? These are the two uh, um, physics courses and two math courses required for physics and engineering majors, okay? And once you complete that, then you go on to calculus three uh, uh, and then differential equations, okay? And that is actually when you get into um, um, junior level and, and, and so forth. Um, so uh, as you can see here, uh, this is actually from the math department chair. If you, if you, uh, if you have you know, a student with um, owner's calculus, high school calculus, or other calculus such as AP with no score or below a three, they would probably place them into Math 120 and that depends, okay? Student can also take Math 120 if they have had Math 111, okay? With a C minus or higher, okay? So if you, if you are not able to take Math 120, then of course you can think about uh, pre-calculus complete pre-calculus and then get into math 120. That'll be a little bit problematic for engineering because it's very credit heavy. So if you're considering engineering, uh, you should be able to take physics 111 and math 120 in this fall, okay? If not, the other option is you can take pre-calculus in this fall, okay? And then take calculus one and Physics 111 Lecture and Lab in the spring, okay? And that summer, you complete Physics 112 Lecture and Lab and then Calculus 2, okay? So you can catch up in your sophomore year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, and that's an option possible in case if you can get into Math 120, okay? So math requisites, uh, those are the, the math requisites. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you have any questions so far? I'll be happy to answer if you have any questions about physics requisites, math uh, and, and, and astrophysics or meteorology requisites or math requisites. If not, I can actually talk, give you a brief outline of what's going on in the department in terms of research. Any questions? Okay. Did you all uh, email me your name and um, your intended major? Please, please do so, okay? Okay, so let me go through quickly, uh, uh, you know, some of our research areas in astronomy and astrophysics, okay? 
we have Dr. Joe Carson. He does extrasolar planets or exoplanets, planets far away. Okay. And Dr. John Hakela does gamma ray bursts. Dr. Penny does <coughs> massive stars. And two of our faculty members, Dr. Chris Fragil and Dr. Joe Chattas, both of them do black holes. I'm sure you might have heard of black holes, right? Uh, um, I don't know, you, some of you might have even taken some of the astro courses. Dr. Ashley Pagnota, and she does stellar explosions. Anna Uribe does planet formation and evolution. Okay, so if you're interested in any of those, uh, when you're on campus, uh, when you start your um, fall um, semester or later, okay, you don't have to hurry. You can talk to the faculty and start doing your research. Okay, you don't have to hurry yourself. Okay. Quickly um, about physics, we also have a, a strong um, materials research group. Okay, so materials and non destructive testing. And uh, myself, I do semiconducting and, and composite materials. Okay, Dr. Teklu does thermoelectric materials. And Dr. Uh, Yu Gong, a new hire, he just started. And he basically does ultra fast dynamics, okay, very fast phenomena. Uh, and Dr. Oprisan, uh, Anna Oprisan, does soft metal physics. Okay, we have a, a ten institution collaborative grant, uh, so we are in the process of developing a, a well equipped uh, material science research facility. We already have several equipment, uh, which I'll actually go through here. We have an electron microscope. Uh, um, we have an atomic force microscope, spec several spectrometers fluorescent spectrometers, photoacoustic spectrometer, X-ray diffractometer, and ultrasound systems, resonant and ultrasound spectrometer, you know, spectrometers and ultrasound systems to test materials, okay? If you're interested in material science. Uh, regarding atmospheric physics and meteorology, okay? Um, our program meets all guidelines for the National Weather Service and American Meteorological Society. Okay, um, if you take uh, the concentrations plus BA. We have three faculty members right now in the department. Dr. Mike Larson does atmospheric microphysics and he studies you know, the formation of um, raindrops uh, and things like that. Dr. Gabriel Williams does inner core structure and dynamics of hurricanes, theoretical work. Okay, and Dr. Lee Lindner does low country weather. Okay, and we have one position vacant, air quality position. Okay, so, but we have three faculty members in the department who basically studies atmospheric microphysics, uh, um, hurricanes, and then low country weather. Okay, and basically um, you get experience on weather analysis and forecasting, radio, television weather casting, radar and satellite technology, material consulting, insurance and risk management. Okay, there are several things right there you'll be getting. Um, very good experience, okay? Uh, medical physics, we have several people doing medical physics, including uh, photodynamic therapy, Dr. Linda Jones, modeling of single cell and biological neural networks by Dr. Oprisan. Uh, myself, uh, in, in, in addition to material science, I also met, uh, do cancer research, okay? Uh, how polymer materials can be used to treat cancer. And Dr. Joe Carson, um, uh, he's an astronomer. He, he basically develops a really good program and an, an, an instrument for identification of precancers of the cervix, okay? So you get hands-on experience on that as well. Systems engineering, new faculty. Um, so um, she basically does organizational performance measurement, systems dynamics, systemic literature reviews, system engineering, engineering management, data science, and so forth, okay? So she is not at here. She will be actually moving into Charleston next month. So when you come here, she will be around, okay? Uh, with research labs and things like that, ready for, for you to go, okay? Uh, we also have an observatory. We have a 24-inch telescope on the rooftop, okay? For um, observing. We do uh, monthly open houses for the public. You also get hands-on experience on uh, our telescope. Okay, so it's well equipped uh, observatory on our roof. Okay. So if you have any questions anytime, 
after this meeting later if you have questions you can email me or i mean in the email you can also request if you need a, a one to one discussion you can actually request a zoom meeting in the future if you need it okay but give me some time okay first you know send me an email so we can find a convenient time to discuss uh, about your um, questions okay all right um, so um, do you have any questions Do you have any questions um, on anything that I discussed? You can unmute your um, mic and welcome to ask questions. Um, sorry, I have a question. Uh, this is Elizabeth. Um, um, yes. Okay, go ahead, Elizabeth. Um, about the, the NASA class, the um, when you do the mission and stuff, mm -hmm. is it different every year? The mission class? Is the subject um, different every year? Yes. Uh, that is actually done by um, Dr. John Hakila. Uh, it's it's team taught, Cass Runyon with in the geology department, and they basically oh. come up with a topic. Okay, so it's team taught. Mm -hmm. It's a very interactive, uh, very applied kind of course, like you know, mission to Mars or something of that sort. So it's very uh, applied, kind of engineering sort of uh, course. You will like it. I mean, there are no exams or anything. It's project based. And the topics are all uh, selected by the two faculty, not me. Oh, okay, thank okay. you. No problem. Any other questions? I have a question. Uh, James? Um, can you explain the difference between the honors calc one class, I mean, the honors physics class and the honors and the non honors physics classes? Um, okay, a good question. The honors close, it's a class, if you look at it, it's a bit more rigorous and kind of research-based, okay? So um, you'll be actually doing uh, not just the regular labs, but you'll be actually doing interdisciplinary or disciplinary uh, uh, research-based labs, okay? So you'll be learning uh, uh, more uh, kind of research-based uh, research-based uh, labs in that course. And it may be you know, a bit more rigorous. Mostly we follow our physics 111 or 112 structure, but you will see variations occasionally making it a bit more applied kind of research oriented. Are you planning to uh, take uh, owner's classes? Yes, and I wanted to know if it's, possible to take calc one and the honors class at the same time as corex or is it a mm. situation uh they bonus college mostly like students to take orders classes uh, i think math 115 is the owners equivalent of math 120 so they basically ask you to take all owners uh, courses uh, uh if you if you act, act, actually plan to get into the owner school most likely you'll be asked to take all owners classes. Yeah. Otherwise you can take just physics 111 and 112 and math 120 and math 220. Thank you. So, did you all have uh, some sort of transfer credits like, you know, for math, uh, anybody took math 120, uh, that means um, high school calculus, owners calculus or, or, or BC calculus? Okay, and then you can transfer it. You don't have to take uh, those classes here. Anybody, any physics background? Like, you know, honors or BC physics, AP level physics? Yeah, any, any question or a concern on your classes? Uh, like, you know, physics or math? No? about engineering okay so if you have any question anytime please feel free to um, to email me okay or or, or request for a, a zoom meeting i'll be happy to arrange a, a zoom meeting or i'll definitely answer your questions okay 
But if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer right now. Or you can uh, always ask me questions anytime. Okay, just send me a, an email and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay. All right, so uh, welcome to the College of Charleston once again. Okay, and I look forward to see you um, during uh, in this fall. Okay, and I hope everything um, goes well and we'll be actually able to meet in person in the fall. Okay, but again, uh, email me your details and I will email you back all the information that you need to know about the department and about our program. Okay, so no more questions. Okay, in that case, all right, folks. Um, so um, see you this fall, okay? And take care.